lord here we go if we can't agree on this there will be no swv and escape show what's going on heavy hitters welcome and welcome back if this is your first time yo look i am at 433 subscribers help your boy out please subscribe like and comment and share baby listen come on in y'all let's have this heavy conversation okay so we are like two episodes into the swv escape divas queens of r&b girl whatever that bullshit is and tasha scott is still doing the food so episode two starts off as it left off in episode one where tamika is fussing at latasha and the mom about how y'all stole money from me or how she stole money from me and you just turned a blind eye well we get a lot more detail in reference to that where the mama knew and told her well you just don't you know you never know what she's going through she may have needed the money and that she was asking for tamika to give her sister grace but she's like girl i'm pregnant my oldest child is in college but she may have needed the money Interestingly enough, after episode one, Tamika Scott goes onto her own YouTube channel to do a little bit of explaining and um, elaborating. Her channel is The Real Tamika Scott. Go support and get the full story there. She says she had to pay taxes on the money she never got. So therefore, when she inquired, she found out who had the money and where it went. So she has like valid proof on what has happened. I really wonder, did Tasha not know? And perhaps that creep of a husband of hers, Rocky, just stole the money and did some illegitimate stuff and illegal stuff to get it right. I, anyway, I don't know. But we are now at this episode and they're, you know, they're fussing and arguing still. And she's now telling Tiny and Candy about the conversation. And then she plays the most outlandish message from her mama. Well, if you didn't watch, I know you want to know what her mama said. Here you go. All I want you to know, you're wrong. You don't want to humble yourself down. You don't want to listen to your mama. Oh, Lord, here we go. You don't want to hear that you hurt your sister deeply. And you don't have enough God in you to calm yourself down and listen to righteousness. <laughs> and if I hear you jumping on your sister, okay, ain't nothing in this world would keep me from kicking your tail. Now, if we didn't believe that the mama had a favorite before then, Oh, we damn sure do now. <laughs> we damn sure know this heifer has a favorite daughter. Because how could you just choose your daughter that stole the other daughter's money and then say, I'm going to kick you to if you... What characteristic or what moment? Well, maybe they got some past history where Tamika has whooped up on Latasha. Oh, nah. But that's crazy. She stole from your other daughter and you're making her the villain and the other, the victim. What do y'all think? Talk about it in the comment. Couple of the castmates meet up, go have desserts. Uh, then they meet over at Candy Spot, the hit factory, and eat some wings and fruit. They talk about this some more. That's not important. You can watch the show. But I want to get into the fact that this fake, 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 whatever scene it is with Rocky and Latasha. This dude creeps me out. There's just something weird about him. First of all, husbands shouldn't be wives managers. That's just weird. Because at this point, you your livelihood now exists on what she does. And you're going to take credit because you're a fake ass manager. You're cloud chasing and you're riding her coattails. Like this is just ridiculous. And he's a creep. They then further their discussion after this weird toast and although Latasha's having an issue with her sister, <laughs> although they do get into briefly about why was he brought up and he don't appreciate it, now they got to deal with the consequences. Girl, red flag. Dude is crazy. They then start having a whole full-fledged conversation about candy. It looked pre-planned. It looked like they thought it out. They're like, okay, so this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to sit down and eat this fruit and drink this champagne, and we're going to talk about the issues that candy has with me. I was sitting there the whole time like, girl, hello, episode one. Your sister said you stole money from her, 30000 that she is now saying that she has had to pay taxes on and that she wants to send you to jail if you keep playing with her. But you turn around and talk about how she has disrespected your mother. This whole conversation was crazy. They then do this pump up, get ready meeting that she has with the record label to launch, propose, accept this solo deal. It was just so fabricated. It was just 
It was insulting. It was insulting to the intelligence of individuals. I lost brain cells. What I will say I learned out of this ridiculous ass conversation is that Latasha's jealous of Candy. It just it just boils out because what I think in her and Rocky's mind is that Candy has the success, the notoriety, the financial stability that she should have had because in her mind, and as many of us have said, Tasha is the better singer. And Tasha probably in her mind is saying, that's the life we should be living. She's t- she's jealous of Candy, point blank. We get to the meeting uh, with Rocky, her, and the record label, which happens to be Motown. They'll be doing the solo project. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be gospel. I heard it's going to be gospel or if it's going to be R&B. One thing I do know is that I don't want her to do an album full of all those extra runs. Like, oh, 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 oh. You're just saying you have a beautiful voice. Sometimes less is more. You can become more effective and you can get to the point. You can minister. You can get people to enjoy it with all the extra. Girl, you don't have to do a run or a rift on every word. Shit is draining. Ugh. Y'all be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Help your boy get above this 433. They do a lot of hemming and hawing. They ask her why now. She explains why now and how she's always wanted to do this. The two record labor reps then ask, what does this mean for Escape? She tells them that she's meeting with them and they don't even know that she is. So they're like, uh, everybody's looking around. Rocky throws her under the bus. Oh, I didn't know she didn't tell him. <laughs> He's looking around. He's moving around like he wants to tell her. Did y'all see the part in the confessional where he whispered in her ear? The producer said, what are you telling her? And he said, what to say? Dude is crazy, controlling, and narcissistic. They then ask her to sing. She sings, and of course, she does all those extra runs and riffs in about two bars, <laughs> two sets of eight-count bars, whatever they call it. And I'm like, see, that's what I'm talking about. All that extra just is not even necessary. They go through a bit more of celebratory action, and he's doing a bunch, being extra, showing how he's ready to make money and live off of her continuously. And the episode ends. Man, let's talk about it in the comments, y'all. Do y'all think she really stole the money? Is he riding her coattail? Is he a thief and she didn't know? Well, until the next time, y'all be easy. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And let's talk about it in the comments.